Welcome back. Back with another banger. It's the React Files. Hope you're having a good night. If you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Just to make sure the algorithm know what's up. So let's get straight to it. Are y'all paying attention? Do you see this behind me? Russian warships are now entering the Red Sea, but that's not all. Do y'all remember when I just showed you that Assad welcomed Putin to build bases in Syria, but more specifically in the Eastern Golan Heights, the one third of the region that Syria claimed. Any military analyst that's watching this situation knew it was a bad omen when Putin put a base right here. Well now Russia is claiming that all of Golan Heights belongs to Syria and they are trying to push out allegedly the IDF and the other groups. At the same exact time they have all these ships in the Red Sea. Don't forget we still have Eisenhower in the Red Sea. Now with all this going on I want to put you in remembrance of the dream that God gave me about this exact situation in September of 2022. It was one of my first videos I posted it in December of 2022. And everything I'm about to say in this video was unheard of at the time. Everyone thought the Russian thing was going to blow over, especially not get to the Middle East. And I had another dream. I saw very, 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 very vividly, I saw a white horse. And it was holding um, like an Iranian type blade. I googled it and found it. This was a sword the horse was holding. I heard the voice of God. And he told me that US and NATO were the horse. The white horse was given a bow and crown and he went forth to conquer. After I saw the horse, I heard God, I saw the sword, I saw the horse, I saw it in midair and it was going right towards Russia. After that, that still voice told me that Russia was going to attack Israel. Now seeing how all this stuff is transpiring in Golan Heights, don't forget Benjamin Netanyahu made Trump Heights, a place in memory of Donald Trump. I find that a really odd coincidence. And of course, all this stuff is transpiring right before the eclipse. Does it mean anything? I don't know. To watch the whole video is pinned on my page. Does it mean anything? I don't know either. But I can say, looking at this, Diddy been a major distraction. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments down below. Have you guys seen the crazy statue at the Denver airport called Lucifer? I mean, Blucifer? What about the crazy murals painted on the wall like this one? And this one? Well, I am just being blasted with downloads lately, and I found a connection between those paintings and the Denver airport and this demon face post I made. And if you don't know what this is, well, I made a post the other day talking about this condition that they were talking about on the news. A Victor Shera? Well, when he sees people, their faces look like demons. And in my opinion, they're just doing that. So when we can see through the veil, we go, oh my gosh, I have that condition. You don't have that condition. You can just see what's actually happening. But back to the point, his name matched up to something, something big. That's right. That guy's name literally matched up to this in the Gematria code. Now look at what I found in these murals. Now at first glance, you might look at this and just think it's a creepy looking thing with these kids around a fire. But I have a keen eye and I noticed that. Can you see what it is yet? How about now? That's a floating city. The floating city that just happens to be talked about in Revelation of the Bible in the coming back of Jesus Christ. And this Lucifer statue too, if you're not familiar with the Bible, it's also talked about in Revelation because the four horsemen of the apocalypse are again talked about with the coming back of Jesus Christ. And not only do they have all of that, but they also have a mural where the sun and the moon are in alignment, meaning a solar eclipse. Now here's what I want to say about this. The most important part is I truly believe we are living in a time past tribulation of the Bible, past the part of Revelation that they're going to try to make us believe is happening. They have capabilities of technology like you would never imagine. So what I'm saying is just use discernment. As the days lead up to the eclipse, have discernment ready. You can best do that 
by ridding yourself of toxins, by doing some fasting where your body isn't trying to process anything and where you can be functioning on a higher level mentally and spiritually, it's time to start getting ready for something big. Now, I'm not saying that the return couldn't happen, but I just want people to have awareness and have discernment and to not be fooled by something evil and something nefarious. So do your absolute best to get your thinking caps and your spiritual caps on and ready, because I think we're heading into some interesting times. But as always, guys, this is just for entertainment. I'm sure this horse is just fun and decorative. I'm just a satire count. Don't take anything I say seriously. Yeah, the murals are creepy. But he has a good eye to see that in the mural. All the way in the back in that small corner. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. The red heifer prophecy is happening on our east. So many Muslims are freaking out because of the red heifer prophecy, which is a Christian and Jewish prophecy that says once Israel sacrifices its 10th red cap, this will summon their Messiah, otherwise known as the Judge. And apparently they're planning this on Eid day. Now the exact date that they have planned to do this ritual is on Eid. For those of you who don't know, this is the last day of Ramadan. Now they didn't pick that day at random, this is a very, very specific moment. During Ramadan, all the Shaitan are locked up. So any kind of demonic anti-Christ rituals they're trying to do can't work until Ramadan's over. So they're waiting for the exact time that Ramadan is to be able to do this ritual. Now of course, this is not a Muslim prophecy and we cannot say if it's 100% true, but if it is, this could mean we're living in the end of time and we must start preparing for the Jal's arrival. If this is true, for entertainment purposes only, could you imagine that? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Assalamualaikum I have been tagged in many different types of video concerning the root cow and what is it about. Is it true? Is it false? One, let me tell you something. The whole cow and the whole red cow thing, this is not new yet, Ikhwan. This has been, this has been like years ago, by the way. And in 2022, matter of fact, they bought the five cows. So it's not something recent, like a lot of people think. They they got it from Texas. They made sure the cows is nothing wrong with them. They'll no blemishes and so on, etc. Because the way that they have to sacrifice this cow, okay, it has to be pure, and according to their ideology or faith. This is a Zionist faith, by the way, Zionist. And if you read Surah Al-Baqarah, when, when they being arrogant, when they were playing games with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, they kept telling him, tell your Lord what, what, is the, what is the color of the cow and so on. They didn't sacrifice the cow. And now they have to go through this ritual. And no, the Zionists, we're talking about Zionists, they deal with black magic. They've been dealing with black magic. And they have to go through this ritual. And this ritual is basically, well, ayyad billah, it's through sihr, through black magic, in order to be, they want to, they have to sacrifice this red cow so they can be pure from all the sins and all the evil. They're going to be in Jahannam, by the way. It doesn't matter how pure they get. Anyway, the ritual they have to go through is this. They use their verses. God spoke to Moses. And he spoke to Aaron saying, this is the ordinance of the law, which the Lord has commanded, saying, speak to the children of Israel, that they bring you a red heifer without a spot, without no spots, wherein there is no blemish or no blemish whatsoever, which upon it never became yoke. And you should give her to Eliezer the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one should slay her before his face. And Eliezer the priest should take off her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh with her blood and her dung shall he burn. And the priest must take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet, and that priest shall cast it in the midst of the burning of the heifer. This sacrifice has to take place for the Zionist because in their small wicked mind, okay, they said this will uh, make faster for the, uh, uh, the Messiah to come i.e. for the Dajjal to come. Alhamdulillah, those who believe in Allah, they will be protected, they will notice he's the Dajjal. And yet, all of those they will follow the Dajjal. But just let you know, if this happened, Ya Ikhwan, 
then may Allah have mercy on us. 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 Wallah, we should take heed. Do not be scared, but we can die today or tomorrow. You feel me? And Isa still has to come, alayhi salam. You feel me? So don't don't trip, but no, get back to your Lord, wallahi. And did you notice that this Ramadan is not like the same Ramadan? It's because of our sins, ya ikhwan. The Palestinians are getting, our sisters are getting, and yet no Arab leaders and none of us doing something about it. We having fun doing suhoor fest. We having fun with our families. We having fun in our houses. We having fun listening to music and so on. This is why Ramadan is not the same. May Allah guide us. Salam. Shout out to Mabu Mecca. M-A-B-U-M-E-C-C-A. For real. Just spitting knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Enlightening the you know, the information, you know, what's it all about? You know? Of course he was talking to his people, so you know. He that has an ear listen, right? What you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I find this very interesting. Very. It's crazy. I'm not allowed to talk about this, but we're gonna do it anyways. The red heifers are in Israel and they're about to be sacrificed. Now bear with me, I'm gonna explain this. I'm gonna to have to word things a very specific way or else I'm gonna get in trouble. So please, I beg you, read between the lines. I'm gonna to try to do everything I can to keep this video up. Now, before I break this down, I have to explain to you guys what the Red Heifers is and why this means the Dajjal or the Antichrist is gonna be here. Now, in the religious text in Numbers 19, it talks about this, where the children of that place was commanded to go find a red cow without a spot or a blemish on it. And its life must be ended and burned outside of the camp. Now, there's a specific ritual that they have to do to make this happen. The fire has to be through cedar wood, they have to add oregano, and then wool that was dyed a specific color. And then after this whole ritual is completed, all the ashes must be placed in a vessel with purified water in it. Now, the reason why you're not going to really find this ritual within the Torah is because it's only taught within the oral traditions, which they keep very secret. They don't teach the oral tradition to any women and no men younger than 40. I just got it. Now, the reason why this is so bad is because that group of people, the same group of people that are currently stealing land, think that it's going to be the Messiah that's going to perform this ritual for them. Now, if you guys have been around for a while, you understand that this group of people who they call Messiah, the Christians call Antichrist, the Muslims call Dajjal. And the timing of this is just way too coincidental. The reason why the timing is so weird is because they have to remove Al-Aqsa, the mosque at Al-Aqsa, to rebuild the third temple. And when they rebuild the third temple, that's when their Messiah is supposed to come. So technically, to be able to perform this ritual, they're going to have to remove all Aqsa, build another temple, and then do everything. Now, for my take on this situation is that until all Aqsa falls, I'm not too concerned with it. A lot of these people make a lot of promises that they don't keep. They lie a lot. And because this group of people has a very bad track record of lying a lot, I don't trust anything they say, and they can claim that they can do whatever they want, but until I actually see it, I don't believe shit. It's very interesting how one's good equivalates to two bads. Unseen footage of the red heifers being selected right here in Texas. Let, let me translate what he said. Okay. He said that we think we found, we think we found a red heifer. Wow. Now, you may have seen stories about red heifers and biblical prophecies going around, but what does this all mean and why is it important and why should I even care? Well, the Faith and Friction team was actually there on site when all of this took place right here in Texas in December of 2021. We've been following along with the front row seat to all that's been happening. So be sure to subscribe and follow us. We are putting together a ton of footage and interviews from that day. But in the meantime, here's some exclusive footage from the Red Heifer selection. Okay, let's see how Okay, open it. Uh, and we're hoping today, we just said, said a small prayer, we just said now, we're hoping that uh, God will help us inspect and find the, the right red heifer, if it's one, if it's two, if it's many, as many, so. Shout out to Faith and Friction for the unseen footage. Very interesting. I wonder if they're going to travel overseas, you know, get that footage as well. That'd be crazy. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. 
So there is a lot of misinformation going around right now, and, and our job is to try to help clarify some of that as it relates to the red heifer. One of the questions that comes up often, which is a good question, is are the particular red heifers that are in Israel genetically modified? And the answer is no, they are not uh, modified at all. And uh, the ranchers have been working for 40 years uh, at breeding these. The other one is about the altar. Uh, there's rumors going around that there's this big altar that's been put on the Mount of Olives ready for them uh, to do the ceremony. That is simply not true. It is a false uh, video that was put out by CBS. Uh, I can't trust them. If you go to our website, you can see where we I did a video lately giving more description about this. But it, it's exciting to be here. Uh, things are happening, but they are not genetically modified, and there is no altar at the present time. Very interesting, you know. That's good, man. Someone, you know, to take care of that misinformation and set the record straight. So I was like, man, this thing gotta put up fast, right? But as he said, some this is prophecy watchers. So uh I don't know. I'll tell you the truth. I'm not out there. If you know, let me know down in the comments down below. Hey, we're coming up on Passover, and here's a red heifer update. Israel now has four red heifers that are still remaining kosher. They're looking forward to sacrificing at least one of these red heifers at Passover this year. At this point, they already have the altar built, and they already have the land purchased where this sacrifice will take place. So, could we be seeing a temple built very soon? Well, at least the gold portion of this temple could be there already. A recent rabbi has traveled to Ethiopia where gold was given for the restoration of the third temple. So it looks like things are falling into place and we could see that red heifer sacrifice on Passover of 2024. It's been over 2,000 years since there was a kosher red heifer that could be sacrificed and ashes be collected for the purification process of Israel. Could we be looking at that being fulfilled here very soon? Absolutely we could. This is the end times and we're living and watching Bible prophecy come to pass. These days Passover seems so grim. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. According to the rabbi and philosopher Maimonides, nine red heifers have been sacrificed since the time of Moses. The last time such a ceremony took place was just before the second temple was destroyed by the Romans, on the Mount of Olives opposite to the Temple Mount. According to Maimonides, when the tenth red heifer will be sacrificed, we will enter a messianic age. Now you may not take it seriously what I'm saying, but the Temple Institute is actively preparing for this monumental event on the Mount of Olives. And there is a reason why the Temple Institute wants to perform the sacrifice of the red heifer on the Mount of Olives. You see, during the second temple times, the red heifers had to be sacrificed away from the temple. The Kidron Valley that separated the Temple Mount from the Mount of Olives provided a sufficient buffer zone between the clean and unclean. Now what is very important to understand is that the ashes of the red heifer mixed with the pure water were used to clean the priests, the temple and the temple instruments. Of course today on the spot where the temple was located we have the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And this is a big problem for the Jewish people today because you can enter the Temple Mount but you are not ceremonially clean and you must be careful where you step because the territory of the Temple Mount is the most holy place for the Jewish people and there were some parts of the Temple Mount that only the High Priest could enter. And this is why the ashes of the red heifer are so crucial in the development, in the building of the next temple. And once the ashes of the red heifer are used to cleanse the temple mount, the construction of the temple will begin. I mean, this is some serious stuff we are talking about.
And as we look at the topography of Jerusalem, we can see that the Mount of Olives is higher than the Temple Mount. And so, the priest that would be performing a sacrifice on the Mount of Olives would see the court of the Temple. And the Temple Institute already has a spot selected on the Mount of Olives where the sacrifice of the red heifer before this year's Passover will take place. So it looks like this Passover will be something very different from what we have known in the past. And the tension is growing as the Temple Institute said that it is very probable that this Passover, the red heifer sacrifice may happen. And we shouldn't be surprised that at this moment, when this is all happening, when all the pieces come together, the tensions between the Arab people and the Jewish people are ultra high. Guys, we are living in incredible times, something that many generations could not witness. We are seeing the resurrection of the nation of Israel where God gathered the Jewish people from all over the earth. And now there are only the final chapters of the scripture that need to be fulfilled. We saw the birth pains of Israel, but after the pain comes great joy and relief. Great information. The eclipse, the red half of prophecy. He's right. What a time to be alive. Like, this is amazing, you know? Just to be able to witness all this stuff. It's gonna be in the history books one day. According to Mosaic law, burning the ashes of a red heifer is a mandatory act for beginning the temple offering to God. The ashes of the red heifer is a key element in a biblically mandated purification ritual. These ashes are required for purification in a range of situations, including contact with dead bodies. Numbers chapter 19. Now with all the bloodshed on the Temple Mount down through the centuries, the Mount itself must be cleansed before the Temple can be built. According to the Torah, Moses prepared the first red heifer, and from that time until the destruction of the Temple, only nine heifers were prepared. There has been no proper red heifer in Israel for the past 2,000 years. The difficulties of finding red heifers anywhere is that they are not only rare, but the animal must meet the requirements as stipulated in the Torah and in the Oral Talmud. The five main criteria for establishing the proper red heifer for the holy purpose of purification are, it should be completely red with no spot or blemish. Actually, the heifer can have no more than two non-red hairs, and the hooves also must be red. It must be a female. Heifers are female. It must never have been used for labor. It must never have been pregnant, and it must be between three to four years old. In Judaism, this prophecy signals the coming of a time that includes the return of biblical laws of purity, thus allowing for truly holy life. For evangelical Christians, it heralds the end of days, the return of Jesus to earth and the rapture. This belief has long driven Christian Zionism and Christian lobbying on behalf of Israel. In September 2022, through a joint effort established between a Christian ministry and the Temple Institute in Jerusalem, five red heifers from Texas were transported to Jerusalem and now graze at a secure, undisclosed location in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. Shout out to Jason Abadi. You know, that was very informative. You know, we've been talking about the Red Heifers, but this really gets into it, you know, especially with the visualizations.
Weekend is when you're weakened from the weak days. A daze is someone who's unable to think or react properly. A state of stunned confusion. Words are spells. This is why we call it spelling. Did you know your subconscious mind takes everything you say as truth? When you use these words, your subconscious mind is picking it up as truth. When you say something is good and say it's sick, you're calling yourself sick. Or bless is be less. Words are encoded and they have secret meanings. Veganism saving me. God is good. Listen is silent and love is evil. You can't do this with the ancient languages. This is why they changed it. Because the Bible tells you, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Because when you talk, you create torus fields, which is an electromagnetic wave. We actually live in cycles, which is a circle. The sun and the moon is the yin and the yang on the flat earth. The psych L is the L, which is the 12th letter, which is the 12 zodiacs. This is the cycle, the circle that we live in. Whatever you do, stop consuming shout outs to revival of wisdom dropping that knowledge the wordplay is crazy i normally don't make videos like this but i thought this kind of stuff only happened in movies they literally kidnapped a youtuber for ransom i hadn't heard of him until now but his name is your fellow arab in 2024 they are literally kidnapping youtubers no one's safe out here and i'm gonna show you a little bit of his last video before they kidnapped him in one second but guess who kidnapped him? A barbecue, the person in charge of the gang that overthrew Haiti. They took your fellow Arab as well as a driver and they're demanding $600,000. If you didn't know, Haiti's totally overthrown right now by barbecue. Emptying prisons and all. So we actually cannot leave to Port-au-Prince until the morning because it's already 6 p.m. and if we leave right now, We'll get there while it's dark. It's about a six hour road trip. We'll get there while it's dark and that place is completely run by gangs. So you don't wanna be dealing with the gangs. Even though we have safe passage, we're already approved. All it takes is one stupid gang member holding an AK-47 for one thing to go wrong. So we're not taking that risk at night. We're gonna be leaving at three in the morning. I just really wanted to show you guys the view from this hotel. We're the only people in this entire hotel. Everybody else is workers, employees, etc. Because no one's allowed in the country, so there's no tourists here, okay, other than those Royal Caribbean guys. But I have the entire hotel to myself. Y'all, this is sad. Barbecue, return your fellow Arab. Be praying for this dude as well as Haiti. My goodness, what a year. Give back your fellow Arab, Barbecue. Barbecue, what a name. His friends wanted him not to go, and he still went. He should have known something was up when he realized he was the only one in that hotel. Just staff? You don't think someone tipped somebody off? And I hope he wasn't live streaming it because they could clearly see the pool, what room he was in. Not a good look. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments down below. This is exactly what I'm talking about when they love to put the truth in plain sight. Check out this commercial. What are they trying to tell y'all? Crazy. Huh. I think we went too high. Right in your face. It's honestly how crazy how they throw this dome everywhere and people will still deny it. Y'all don't forget to like, follow me, and share this. Let's get this out to the people. And like always, God bless. A bank is a river bank because it directs the current sea. Money is water. This is why we say liquidity. Sun and moon, masculine, feminine, fire and water. Money is moony. This is the water aspect, the female. Hence why there's a correlation between the full moon and the new moon and the forex market. The moon attracts the water's tides. This is why the sea levels are higher wherever the moon is. The moon has an effect on our mood because we are 80% water. Your 
birth certificate is not you. It's the corporation that you represent because you choose to identify yourself with the name, which is the corporation. When you die, you're called a corpse. You are not the name. You are the I, the I am, which is the invisible intelligence, consciousness. You get charged in a court because you're a battery and then sit in a cell, a battery cell. Don't use the code SPRING8 to get 26% off. Way. Did the Simpsons do it again? Did they predict the rapture? Well, watch this and we'll talk about it. What's happening? It's the rapture, Sean. The rapture. The virtuous have gone to heaven and the rest of us have been left below. God wouldn't spring the rapture on us unannounced. He'd send us signs. Mark is right. The rapture isn't coming. There haven't been any ominous signs. 3.15 p.m. May 18th. Uh, Okay, before we begin, this is my personal opinion, speculation, a theory, and all for entertainment purposes. And let me also make this clear. I am not telling you that they have predicted the rapture. I just want to point out a coincidence. Okay, so now with that clip, we had Homer talking to Marge about the rapture. She tells him God would send signs if there was a rapture. And then Homer makes a joke. Oh, well, I guess there hasn't been any signs. And then the devil comes to his door symbolizing the things that we are seeing in the world it is so blatantly clear so blatant that satan rules this world there are signs everywhere it is blatant so we have a joke there and now homer goes into this whole scenario or whole rabbit hole of finding out the actual date to the rapture now his calculations point him to may 18th he then tells the entire town they all get ready for may 18th and nothing happens. He is then scoffed and mocked. But then he realizes he messed up on his calculation. He forgot one day. So the real day is May 19th. And in that episode, he was correct. He was raptured on May 19th. Now you may be asking, okay, Matt, what's going on with May 19th? Well, I guess it's just a coincidence that after the eclipse on April 8th, 40 full days later, ends you up on May 19th. Now, what is May 19th? It is Pentecost. So you have the great American eclipse on April 8th. You have 40 days of repentance leads you to May 19th, which ends up being Pentecost when the church was born and the Holy Spirit descended upon us. Hmm. Interesting. So you have Homer sounding the alarm about the rapture coming. He gets the date wrong. Everybody scoffs and mocks at him. But the next day, May 19th, it actually happens. Could that symbolize everybody being mocked and scoffed right now, calling the rapture for April 8th? Nothing happens. But on Pentecost, something happens May 19th. I guess we'll have to find out and see. Now we know the Simpsons have had their fair share of coincidences of predicting future events. Is this another one? Now I'm not telling you the rapture is going to happen on May 19th. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I just found this interesting. I thought it was a fun topic. I thought it was a coincidence and I wanted to bring it to you guys for you all to see and meditate on and to find entertainment from it. All right. Do not harm the messenger. I know people are going to freak out. Oh, oh, you're predicting it's not going to happen. I'll meet you on May 20th and uh, blah, 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 scoffing and mocking. Like I'm having a fun time here, guys. Let's try to have a fun time. I found this interesting. That's it. That's it. Trying to have some fun here. The Simpsons do weird things. They are right. And this was a interesting episode. And I find it intriguing that May 19th is Pentecost, 40 days after the Great American Solar Eclipse, which represents Jonah and Nineveh, 40 Days of Repentance. 
all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I am sure we will be here May 20th and everything will be fine, okay? Like, don't, you don't have to comment calling me a fear monger and then I'm predicting a date or a date setter. I'm not setting a date. Please understand the purpose of this video is for entertainment. With that, guys, I love you all so much. God bless. Whenever the rapture happens, it happens. Whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, it's not post-trib. That's impossible. I have reasons. I can make videos on how post-trib is impossible. But whatever, right? We have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes focused on him. Ask him for discernment. Ask him for wisdom. And with that, God bless. And remember, the just shall live by faith. Very interesting. Interesting and fun, I agree. You know? I think the Simpsons, man, they know them dates. They probably wrote it around that, you know, time period to match up or something. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Life is a file which gets recorded by the two eyes and stored within the mind. You do not encounter the external world. You experience electrical impulses on your nervous system. You do not see into reality. The eyes are black holes. They suck in the light and the image is produced in the visual cortex. There is no past and future. There's only an infinite and indefinite now, which is infinitely running. You're in a folded time and space simulation. Earth rearranged his heart because your body is simulating Earth to your consciousness. When the heart stops, you leave Earth, which is the body. You are eternal. You never die. Death is a transition. Can we talk about the dark history of Easter? You gotta make sure you check outside. Sorry to say that Easter has nothing to do with Jesus. Many aspects of traditional Christianity, holidays, practices, doctrines, the bunnies, the eggs, springtime came not from Christ or the Bible, but came from pagan religion. Easter Sunday is a Babylonian pagan holiday, which idolizes the fertility goddess Ishtar. Worshiping Ishtar was intended to ask for her blessing of fertility on the crops and everything else. On the first Sunday after the full moon, they would celebrate by baking cakes, getting drunk and committing other heinous crimes. Women were required to celebrate the conception by laying down at the temple of Ishtar and having relations with anybody who walks in. There is a very, very dark history on why they color eggs. They were sacrificed and the blood of the eggs were dipped in the eggs for Ishtar. Want to know the reason there's a bunny rabbit? Rabbits can bear several litters of young each year, meaning they have high fertility. Decorating eggs seems harmless until you consider the origins of it. None of this had to do with Christianity. The bunnies and the eggs are not as simple as they seem. And this holiday is not holy. Y'all be safe. And that's crazy. I remember dipping eggs, you know what I mean? For the Easter hunt. Did not know the meaning. It always got me, you know? You got the... Easter Sunday where people go to church, right? Then you got the Easter Sunday where people, you know, hide Easter eggs, like a bunny. Where the bunny come from? As she said, high fertility. That's crazy, right? Hell yeah, it is. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Then why do we celebrate Easter? Why do you hide eggs and bunny rabbits? Well, think about what bunny rabbits are meant, known for humping dude you put two rabbits together dude next thing you know there's a hundred and then the easter eggs is fertility it was it was for the god of ishtar isn't that crazy most people don't know that way back in the day they celebrated by having and making babies so nine months later they could sacrifice those to horus the sun god who was born december 25th by the way now when do they say jesus was born december 25th he wasn't and everybody knows that. You go ask any biblical scholar, they will say he was not born on December 25th. Then why are we celebrating Christmas? That the true origins of Easter actually had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Easter was originally an ancient pagan holiday, which was in honor of the goddess Istra or Ostara, symbolizing the resurrection of spring. The Easter bunny and the eggs represent the fertility of spring. But somewhere in our history, Christianity came along and changed the resurrection of spring to the resurrection of Jesus Christ and buried the ancient knowledge of the true origins of Easter. So I just made a video about the fact that Easter is not March 31st. Even though everybody's gonna be celebrating it on March 31st, it's not March 31st. If you wanna see the video explaining where, when Easter is really supposed to be celebrated, or should I say Resurrection Day, go watch my video. 
So on March 31st, 2024, Christians all over the world will be celebrating Easter on the wrong day in the wrong way. As Christians, we shouldn't be celebrating Easter at all. Easter is not a Christian holiday. Easter comes from ancient Babylon, and God called us to come out of Babylon. He said, come out of her, my people. But a lot of people just refuse to do it. Some people are doing it ignorantly. They haven't heard that Easter is a Babylonian holiday. But some people have heard it and do know and have gotten the information and they refuse it. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you. What Jesus did on the cross and raising from the dead is way too serious to be celebrated in the same way that pagans in Babylon celebrated their gods. It's blasphemy. I hope you take this video seriously. So what is Easter all about? Do your own research and look this up for yourself. Don't believe it just because I told you. Always seek confirmation from the Holy Spirit. Ask God to reveal this to you if it's true. So in ancient Babylon, there was a goddess that they worshiped named Semiramis. She was the goddess of fertility. And they used to celebrate her by basically, I'm just going to say it, having a big It's sick. They adopted the rabbit as a symbol because rabbits are very, uh, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Promiscuous. Rabbits mate a lot. I'll just say that. So that's why they adopted the rabbit as a symbol. They also adopted the egg as a symbol of fertility. And they would have these huge orgies. And obviously, there would be a lot of pregnancies during this time. The babies would be born nine months later, right around Christmas time. Go figure. And then three months after that, we have Easter again. And the babies that were born three months earlier from the pregnancies that took place the Easter before, they would take these babies and I have to be careful how I say this because I don't want this video to get taken down. They would offer these babies to their God. I think you can fill in the blank. And then they would take the eggs that they adopted as their symbol and they would dip these eggs in the red substance that came from the baby's offerings. And this is where dying Easter eggs come from. This is where that tradition comes from. Oh, but that's not what it means to me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it means to you. Yo, we cannot do these things and place our own meanings on them. That's not going to cut it on Judgment Day. When I learned these things, I stopped celebrating Easter immediately. And you should too. So as time moved on, other languages, other cultures, they, they worshiped the same goddess, but they called her different names. Other names of Semiramis include Astarte, Ashtoreth, Isis, Aphrodite, some call her the Madonna, and Ishtar, which sounds oddly familiar to Easter. Ishtar, Easter, yeah, lines up. If I were y'all, I would look into this, I would research it, research the occult origins, of Easter and if you really want to be serious about your faith and your relationship with Jesus and you want to celebrate his resurrection I suggest not doing it the same way that ancient pagans celebrated their false gods remember when I told you that you need to check every symbol and the origins of the holidays that we are made to celebrate because there are meanings behind it that whenever you ask you don't get an e and clear answer you are told something else but the symbolism behind the holiday it means something else hi my name is sintu and i am an african first so i spoke about easter and the origins of easter which is it was or it still is a pagan holiday and the name easter comes from the goddess the pagan goddess of fertility right that's what I spoke about yesterday. And then I asked about the symbolism behind the egg and the rabbit, which is they say that uh, just like rabbits and eggs, it symbolize rebirth, fertility. And then what does it have to do with the death of Jesus Christ then? And why is it named after a goddess of fertility? Why isn't it named after Jesus himself? Remember? 
so New Year's Eve, right? The first recorded celebration of New Year's Eve took place in an ancient Babylon around 2000 BC. The ancient Babylonians celebrated the New Year with a festival called Akitu, which was held in honor of a god, Marduk. Okay, so it's not the beginning of the year. They are just honoring this god called Makduk. Okay, let's check who is Makduk. Okay, they say originally this god, uh, he seems to have been a god of thunderstorm. Okay, so it is not a coincidence that on New Year's Eve we have these fireworks because the god that is being celebrated here it was a god of thunderstorm so we have to have something that re represent or symbolizes thunderstorm since mark duke was a god of thunderstorm hmm. why is january called january we celebrate new year's day on january 1st by tradition whose tradition our modern New Year's Day celebration stems from the ancient two-faced Roman god Janus or Janus, after whom the month of January is named. So they can name things after gods, but you cannot worship any other god. Eh? But the Bible says, "Thou shalt not worship any other god except for me, for I am God." But they can name their months after their own gods and you are not allowed to know or to celebrate your own gods okay Christmas so you are trying to tell me that this is just a coincidence this is just a coincidence it's just a coincidence that our ancestors were being unalive like this and it's just a coincidence that they happen to decorate the Christmas tree like this check the origins of these holidays and the symbolism and the time behind it because it means something to them and you don't understand and you actively participate in things that got nothing to do with you rituals are being done here and guess who is the sacrifice it's another coincidence that we have something called Good Friday, I mean uh, Black Friday. And in history, there is something that is Black, Black Friday, it was from slavery actually. It was the day after Thanksgiving when slaves, traders will sell slaves for a discount to assist plantation owners with more helpers for the upcoming winter for cutting, stacking firewood. So these slaves, and who were these slaves? During this time, or this day, they had something called Black Friday. It's just a coincidence, you know? It is not related. Wow. Remember yesterday we spoke about uh, when they celebrate Easter, which they celebrated in the beginning of spring in Europe. Here in Africa, it, winter is coming. To them, it is spring, right? In March, timing. They do their rituals at a specific time, and you are just made to follow, consume, accept, um, be an obedient slave, follow the master, and do not question. Do not have any question. All the symbolism around this holidays it doesn't make sense but to them they know what they're doing you are the one who doesn't want to follow your own ways you don't want to follow the ways of your ancestors but you can bow to some gods of thunderstorm you can celebrate the goddess of fertility you celebrate black friday new year's eve christmas you have to wake up it's now Will never wake up and go back to the ways of your ancestors. Shout out to Sin2 underscore N2. That's S I N T U underscore N T U. Behind every holiday, there's a deeper meaning on the things we celebrate, you know? 
but it takes real digging in the history books to understand what's really going on. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, what? If you want your mind blown about something I found with this, stick around. I saw this a few days ago and I wasn't posting on it because I saw a bunch of people were doing it and I just was like, okay, they got it. But then I discovered something. Check this out. I heard my buddy JT follows JC, who if you like my content, go follow him, talking about the sun god Ra. And it made me think, Ra. They're shooting Ra kits into the sun. Ra kits which means to call or invite. So they're calling and inviting the sun god. And then it got me thinking more because NASA is the one doing this and NASA is just an extension of the evil controllers of this world. And I kept exploring and this is what I found. The eye of Ra or eye of Ray, usually depicted as a sun disc or the right eye is an entity in Egypt mythology that functions as an extension of the sun god Ra's power equated with the disc of the sun but it also often behaves as an independent goddess, a feminine counterpart to Ra and a violent force that subdues his enemies. Now there's two ways to interpret this. One, were the enemies and they're trying to invite Ra or the eye of Ra to us to subdue us, or they're trying to blast Ra or the eye of Ra out of the sky because they think that energy is coming to take care of them. Either way you look at it, it's mind boggling to me, just blew my mind that the word rocket 100% comes from that and the word cat. Man, there's interesting times coming, I'll tell you that. And like I keep saying, get your discernment ready. Oh, and of course, this was only for entertainment purposes. That's a great question. I just thought the sun and the moon were millions of miles away. Last I checked. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Zechariah Sitchin was an author known for his works in the history of mankind's origins involving ancient astronauts. Born in Russia in 1920 and raised in Palestine, he acquired a deep knowledge of modern and ancient Hebrew, other Semitic and European languages, the Old Testament, and the history and archaeology of the Near East a graduate of the University of London. Throughout his life, he worked as a journalist and executive for a shipping company, but he is most famous for his Earth Chronicles book series, starting with The Twelfth Planet, published in 1976. These works are based on his translations of ancient Sumerian tablets and texts, dating back over 5,000 years. Sitchin posited that these ancient writings were not mythological, but historical and scientific records of an advanced extraterrestrial race, the Anunnaki, who visited Earth from a yet-to-be-discovered planet in our solar system, which he called Nibiru. The story of the Anunnaki, as detailed in Zechariah Sitchin's The Twelfth Planet, presents a fascinating and complex narrative about these ancient beings' influence on Earth and human civilization. Sitchin's work is controversial and considered by many to be pseudoscience, but it certainly makes for an intriguing story. Our saga begins around 450,000 years ago when the Anunnaki, a sophisticated extraterrestrial race from a distant planet called Nibiru, find themselves in dire need of gold to mend their planet's deteriorating atmosphere. Their quest leads them to Earth rich in the precious metals they desperately require. Upon their arrival, they established their first colony in Mesopotamia, laying the groundwork for what would become a sprawling network of mining operations, primarily centered in the gold-rich regions of Africa. As their terrestrial endeavors expand, the Anunnaki face the challenge of labor shortages and the grueling demands of gold extraction. To overcome this, they employ genetic manipulation, combining their DNA with that of an early human ancestor, possibly Homo erectus, to create Homo sapiens. This newly engineered worker species was designed to bear the burdens of labor, mining the gold that was so crucial for the Anunnaki's survival and their home planet's restoration. With the passage of time, the presence of the Anunnaki on Earth becomes more entrenched. 
they established numerous settlements and city-states, primarily in the fertile crescent of Mesopotamia, where they could closely monitor and manage the mining operations and the burgeoning human populations. These city-states, often regarded as the cradle of civilization by historians, are where the Anunnaki are said to have shared their advanced knowledge with humanity, influencing the early development of agriculture, writing, and governance. However, the Anunnaki's dominion was not without its challenges. The Great Deluge, a catastrophic flood event, is a pivotal moment in Sitchin's timeline, occurring around 11,000 years ago. This disaster reshapes the face of the earth and serves as a turning point for the Anunnaki's direct involvement with humanity. Following the flood, the Anunnaki retreat from their overt rulership, opting instead to rule through intermediaries and leaving behind a legacy shrouded in myth and legend. As the eons pass, the influence of the Anunnaki wanes, transitioning from direct interaction to the realm of the gods of ancient mythologies. Their legacy, according to Sitchin, is embedded in the very foundation of human civilization, from the architectural marvels of the ancient world to the complex societal structures that have evolved over millennia. Despite the skepticism surrounding Sitchin's theories, his narrative presents a tantalizing glimpse into an alternative history of mankind, where the lines between gods and aliens blur, leaving us to wonder about the true origins of our species and the mysteries that lie beyond our earthly realm. You have to see this. The Grim Reaper may have actually been caught on camera. So this video I'm about to play is coming out of El Salvador, where there have been recent reports of paranormal manifestations accompanying tragic events. Some paranormal investigators say that this was the angel of death caught on camera. Watch this. In this video, you can see the moment that a driver loses control of their vehicle, crashes through a guardrail, and ends up in a ravine. The accident resulted in the death of the driver. Now this is the strange part. Moments after the car crashes, a truck passes by, and on this truck, you can see a dark humanoid figure standing and seemingly observing the car crash. Paranormal investigator Caesar Sagath believes that this was the angel of death, who is cited in parts of the Bible, and who he says is responsible for transporting souls to the spiritual world. So the Grim Reaper is just truck surfing like Jason Bourne just to grab souls. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Put this whole thing together. When you look at the betrayal money, let me just put it on the screen. Do you, what do you see here? Judah betrayed his brother Joseph for 20 pieces of silver. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. This goes together hand in hand. And when you understand that this is one big prophecy that has to do with the second coming of Jesus Christ to this earth, wow. Now I know what you're thinking. I know what you're doing in your head because it's natural. What you're doing is you're subtracting seven years from this number because if Jesus Christ comes back in 2030, well, then there was a seven-year period before that called Daniel's 70th week or Israel's 70th week, which is seven years long. So you subtract seven from 2030 and you end up where? You end up in the year 23. So will Daniel's 70th week begin in 2023, likely in the fall? That I don't know. What I do know is that in Hosea 6.2, Hosea said that Israel will live in Jesus Christ's sight after two days. And Peter said that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So two days is 2,000 years. In essence, Jesus is telling Israel that he's coming back to earth in 2,000 years. From what year? Exactly 2,000 years from what year? We're going to be looking into that on this channel. And it just so happens that there's some things that you can't do with other numbers that you can do with 2030 and with 2023. And that is that 2030 is another form of 23. So these two numbers go hand in hand, 2023 and 2030. In Jude 1.14, he mentions that Enoch is the seventh from Adam in the lineage from Adam to Jesus. Well, guess who just happens to be the 23rd? It's Jacob, Israel, and seven plus 23, is 30. Also, 20 plus 30 equals 50. 50 is a jubilee on God's calendar, and many believe Jesus will return at a jubilee. Now again, I'm not here to make any predictions. That's not what I'm doing. I'm studying a King James Bible, and I'm 
just trying to get some exegesis. I'm trying to pull out, exit the facts out of the text. The fact is, is that Joseph is betrayed as the type and shadow of Jesus Christ. He is betrayed for 20 pieces of silver. Jesus is betrayed by 30 pieces of silver. Both by Judah or Judas. Both of them, Jesus Christ returns in a vesture dipped in blood. Joseph's coat was dipped in blood. Jesus predicted this, both pointing back at Joseph and pointing to himself by dipping a sop in wine, wine representing blood. Okay, I wanted to show you the chronology. It's a coat of many colors, so I used little uh, many colors to, to show this to you. But I wanted to show you the, the, the connections between these prophecies. Okay. On the left, we've got Genesis 37. This is uh, verse 3, 26, 27, 28, and 31. So it's chronological. And it says, Now Israel loved Joseph, so this is about Joseph in yellow, more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age and made him a coat of many colors. So then if we go over to Luke, this is all in, uh, it's not in chronological in the same uh, chapter, but it's chronological as far as time goes. Luke 3 is the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and it says Jesus himself began to be about 30. My theory is a 30 theory, okay? Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Tem means a place of worship. El is an ancient Canaanite name for God. The sides of the head region are referred to as temples. The head is the temple of God. Is this why the early Christians were showing God is in the brain, touching Adam? Genesis 32 30, Jacob called the name Peniel, where he's seen God face to face, which sounds a lot like the Peniel gland. Maybe this is why Luke 17 12 says the kingdom of God is within you. The power symbol upside down is the neck and the brain. Res means head, erection means sexual stimulation. Resurrection is raising a sexual energy from the base of the spine up to the head, which is heaven. Heart rearranges earth, heal is hell. Heaven, earth, and hell correspond with the three higher, middle, and lower brains. Jesus and Satan is an internal battle between the higher and the lower self, which was Horus and Set in the Egyptian times. Ark of the Covenant is the two angels covering, which is the two hemispheres covering the flame of the mind in the center of the brain. It is all meant to be taken internally, not externally. I want to have bars. I was breaking it down. I'm going to have to watch that one over. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Once I zoomed in, look at the branch. It looks like a snake biting it too, but what they're doing here is mocking. These are fallen angel mockeries where they know that most of the church doesn't know that it was a sexual sin in the garden that Cain and Abel were really of two different fathers. And this has been smeared this belief because it's the truth. Satan uses all of his institutions, all of his Lucius Trust Theosophical Society to squeeze institutions. Besides that, the seminaries were infiltrated by the Rockefellers in the 1880s. And a lot of this the good doctrine has been chipped away over time. Satan is definitely slow, so it can seem palatable to people, so it doesn't trigger their alarms. So when these things are hidden in places, you know, anyways, it's mockery. CIA documents reveal that reality is holographic, which means that we are living inside of a computer simulation. The documents state electromagnetic holographic fields create reality. These fields create every form within nature. The body is a holographic projection of consciousness. It consists of intellect and realms of data. DNA is an antenna and receptor for sound-based information, shaping our electromagnetic field. The field then organizes astral light into photons which create the holographic body. Everything from thoughts to images leaves vibrational imprints influencing DNA expressions. These expressions will then manifest into the holographic world into our physical reality. So yes, your mind has been uploaded into a computer simulation to experience this reality. You do not encounter the external world. You only experience the electrical impulses on your nervous system, which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life is the cardiovascular system. If you want to learn more about this, read my book, The Book of Wisdom, or join the academy to gain all of the occult lectures. This is for the people who think that they're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Day. Now, where in the world did we ever get Easter to celebrate Jesus' 
resurrection. Have you ever wondered about that? I bet most of you have never thought about it twice. You know why? Because everybody's always done it. Your mommy and daddy did it. Their parents did it. Grandma and grandpa did it. Great grandparents did it. You do it because everybody else has done it all your life. You just kind of go along because everybody else has done it, right? All right. But where did it come from? Did the thought ever cross your mind? First of all, let me make a statement here that's going to blow your mind. Do you know that Easter Sunday cannot possibly be the day of the resurrection? You know why? Easter never falls on the same date year to year, right? It can't be the day of Jesus' resurrection. I'll tell you why. Look at the screen here. For example, let's go back five or six years. In 1996, Easter came on April the 7th. That's when you all celebrated it. The next year, 1997, it came on March the 30th. Hmm. The next year, 1998, it came on April the 12th. Last year, it came on April the 3rd. This year, it's going to come on April the 23rd. So how can you have a difference from April the 23rd clear back to March 30th? That's a difference of 23 days. How does that happen? I'll tell you how it happens. Easter is not regulated by a date. Easter is regulated by the solar system. You know why? Easter always comes the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the equinox, when days and nights are equal length. You never knew that, did you? Isn't that amazing? And so all the people that are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday morning, it's just not true. It didn't happen then. <laughs> okay? But anyway, the question is, how did we ever get Easter on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox? Did you ever wonder about that? I'll tell you where it comes from. Would you like to guess? It comes from Babylon. You're right. Everything goes back to Babylon. I don't care what it is. In Babylon, they had a goddess of fertility. Her name was, interestingly, Ishtar. I-S-H-T-A-R. That's where we get our word Easter from, was this pagan goddess of fertility. If you doubt this, by the way, go home tonight in your encyclopedia and look up Easter in your encyclopedia. It'll tell you the whole story that I'm going to tell you right now. It's in every history book. And what they did, this goddess of fertility called Ishtar, they worshipped her in the springtime. You know why? Because everything was coming to life. And she was the one that caused all life and everything to grow anyway. So they thought she got very active in the springtime. So they honored her always on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox. That was Ishtar's day. Because she was the goddess of fertility, the goddess of reproduction. And you know what happens, folks? They took that then, and they celebrated this day of her in her honor, and so did Medo-Persia, and so did Greece. In fact, uh, Greece had her under another name called Venus. You ever heard of Venus before? That's Ishtar in Babylon, the same thing. And then you go to Rome, and Rome had this, and folks, the same thing. You come to Constantine. Constantine, about 300 years after Jesus, says, hey, we got all these pagans out here, and they're worshiping Ishtar on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox. You know what? Jesus rose from the tomb in the springtime. It was Passover time and so on. Why don't we take this Ishtar's day, and instead of giving honor to Ishtar, the giver of life and so on, Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus is the life. Why don't we start to keep this day in honor of Jesus Christ? And we can win all these pagans to Christianity. And the Christian said, that's a great idea. And so, folks, he changed Easter's day to Easter day in honor of Jesus' resurrection. And then, as Papal Rome again rules the entire world for the next 1260 years, it passes that teaching on to everybody in the world, and the whole world does it, and nobody even thinks twice about it. But you all tell me, what in the world do chocolate chickies and bunny rabbits got to do with the resurrection of Jesus? Because, folks, in Babylon, they worshipped the egg on Easter's day, because an egg is a symbol of fertility. Fertility. Not only that, they worship bunny rabbits on Easter's Day. You know why? Because bunny rabbits are the most prolific reproducers in the world. I know. I grew up on a ranch. We had lots of rabbits. All rabbits do is make love and have babies. Isn't that right? Yeah. And so, honestly, they worship the rabbit. And we still have that today, all the way back from Babylon. If things like Christmas and Easter, coming straight from pagan Babylon, have made their way into our world tonight, and been Christianized, and everybody just does it because everybody else does it. My question to you is this. Don't you suppose that there might be some other things also? Don't you suppose there might have been some other false teachings or errors or pagan practices or deceptions that have snuck their way in that we are following and teaching and practicing that's totally contrary to the truth of the Bible. Don't you think there might be some of those? You better believe it, my friends. You better believe it. There are many, many things 
not only in our world, but also in our Christian world today, that we believe, that we teach, that we follow, and that we practice many things that are totally contrary to this Bible that you're holding in your hands tonight. History is repeating itself. And I'm going to tell you something. If the devil was so successful to deceive everybody at the first coming of Jesus, because they were so entrenched with the false teachings of Babylon at that time, don't you think the devil has redoubled his efforts in these last days? You better believe it, folks. The Temple of Set is a religious organization founded in 1975 by Michael A. Aquino and a group of members from the Church of Satan. These individuals were seeking a more serious and in-depth form of spiritual practice than they felt was available in the Church of Satan at the time. They were drawn to the figure of Set, an ancient Egyptian god associated with chaos, the desert, and storms, but also with the positive aspects of individualism, strength, and enlightenment. Set, in ancient Egyptian religion, was a complex figure. He was seen as the god of the desert, storms, disorder, and foreigners, and was associated with violence and chaos. However, Set was also considered a protector of Ra, the sun god, during his nightly journey through the underworld. This duality of Set's nature is reflected in the temple's philosophy, which emphasizes personal growth, self-discovery, and the pursuit of individual goals and knowledge. The foundational concept in the temple of Set is Zipper, pronounced Kefir, an ancient Egyptian term meaning, I have come into being. This concept signifies self-evolution and the quest for individual realization and transformation. Members of the temple known as Setians engage in magical practices and studies aimed at personal development and achieving a higher state of consciousness. The temple views Set not as a deity to be worshipped in a traditional sense, but as a symbol or archetype representing the potential for individual excellence and self-deification. The temple of Set differentiates itself from other religious movements by its emphasis on personal growth and responsibility. It doesn't prescribe a fixed set of dogmas, but encourages its members to explore their own path within the framework of Setian philosophy. The organization is structured into degrees, reflecting the members' level of understanding and involvement in the temple's practices. Shout out to Jason Abadi. The temple of Set explained. Yo. Sounds bugged out. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Usually know that Islam has an antichrist of its own, which can be compared to the biblical figure in certain ways. His name, Dajjal, or Arabic for deceiver. He is a man that will come in the last days performing false miracles, will claim to be the God of the Jews in Jerusalem, and will deceive the world away from the Islamic faith. Now that sounds somewhat similar to the Bible's version, right? But here is where it starts to get scary. The John, in the midst of his rule, is said to be the direct enemy of two messianic figures that will come to oppose his dominion and establish the new Islamic world order. Now why is this story so unsettling, you might ask? Well, according to the biblical version, the Antichrist does not operate alone, like the John, but rather has an accomplice. You know him as the false prophet, and together, these two individuals wage war on a single man. A man who also claims to be the God of the Jews, performs miracles, and leads people out of the Islamic faith. Who is this figure? Can you guess? His name is Jesus Christ. When these two accounts are put side by side, they seem to be the exact same story. Just from different perspectives, the roles are simply reversed. The heroes for one account are the enemies of the other. Islam's Dajjal is the Bible's Messiah, and Islam's Messiahs are the Bible's Antichrists. Now that is a lot to take in, believe me I know. We haven't even begun to unravel the full mystery yet. 
But what you first need to understand is that the differences we see between these figures do not make its followers enemies in the same way. Christians are called to love their neighbor and Muslims to peaceful submission to Allah. It should not be viewed as one versus the other. This video was made in fact for both groups, the Muslim and the Christian. It's for the individual who wants to understand the warnings given by the prophets and apostles of old to make themselves ready for the spirit of truth and the deception that's coming upon the entire world. Many people think the Bible is silent on the religion of Islam, considering it was written nearly 600 years before the Quran. But what if I told you the exact opposite? What if I told you Islam not only plays a minor role in the end times, but could actually be the main character? Okay, so you have seen how these two figures share striking similarities to each other, Islam's Dajjal and the Bible's Messiah. But this leaves us with so many questions. As a Christian, you may be trying to reconcile this fact. How could Islam's Antichrist actually be Jesus Christ? And as a Muslim, you may be wondering the same thing, but for a different reason. You have perhaps been taught that Dajjal will be killed by Jesus himself, thrust through by a spear upon his return. But this confusion is actually where the heart of the issue lies. The man you see here, who is said to defeat Dajjal in battle, is named Isa al-Masih, or in other words, Jesus Christ. What we are looking at in the accounts is none other than a battle between two men who claim to be Jesus. And now you see the mystery unfold. The two greatest religions on earth which combine account for 53% of the total world's population. Both claim to produce a version of Jesus near the end of time. But what is most interesting is that both accounts warn of the other as being a false Christ. Confused yet? For false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Now this seems to be a general warning of a great number of false prophets and false messiahs that will rise up to deceive the flock of God throughout history. And believe me, we have already had plenty of those. But on further analysis, the biblical Jesus can be seen given very specific warnings about one specific figure. If anyone tells you there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed tonight's rabbit hole. Before we go, I want to give a huge shout out to Sherry, Tarika, April, Top Rope Takeover, Ashley, ER, Forever Faded, Nola, Marie, Harry, Dukester, and Brandon. I appreciate y'all support. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like subscribe ring that notification bell just to make sure the algorithm know what's up so what we're gonna do y'all that's right run these numbers up thanks again until next time